So let's take that model. And what do you do about that opportunity? In particular, how do you create more opportunities? And I intentionally chose the word create there because it's actually an acronym. And I'm going to talk about six different things you can do in the area of creating that additional opportunity. Here we get into some of the, how do I do this, Brian? What do I do? Give me some ideas. Give me some tips. Uh, a lot of seminars will tell you everything you need to do, but not necessarily how. This is part of the how part. So let's look at that create acronym and six things you can do to help create those additional opportunities. First is communications. The C stands for communications. However you communicate, maybe that's over the phone, maybe that's your business card, maybe it's a follow-up thank you note, maybe it's a dozen roses you send on the one-year anniversary of the installation of the new wood floor. I don't know what it is, but communicate. And make sure the customer knows how to communicate with you. She's going to get questions. Where did you get that new flooring? What did you think about that business? What about the salesperson? Who exactly did you work with? Make sure the customer is equipped with that information, how people can get in touch with you. So the C is communication, and it's about where did you get your new flooring? Make sure they know how to answer that question. They will drive people to your door. The R is make a return offer. Give them motivation to come back. And I'm going to make your life a little complicated. I'm not a big advocate of discounts as return offers. You come back, I'll give you 20% off. Do you need to? You're giving away half of your margin and you don't even know if you need to yet. There can be many different kinds of return offers. That offer can be, I will give you a personal appointment. You work during the day, you're only available after five o'clock. I'll keep the store open late for you as a special service. I work with a designer. I'll make sure that designer gives us a free consultation, gives you a free consultation. Whatever it is, some compelling reason for the customer to come back to you, to your store, to your business, a return offer. That's my R. The E, create an expectation that there will be a follow-up conversation and you're going to ask for more business. Now, how many of you think salespeople in general are uncomfortable asking for the order? 90% is one answer. Anybody else? It's awkward, and the customer might say no, and it's scary. And what if they start asking questions? And what if they had a bad experience, and now they're going to dump it all over you? And what if the kids are sick, you know, and you're wasting it? There's lots of reasons, right, why people don't ask for the order. But let me ask you, if you go to a restaurant, do you expect the waiter to ask for your order? I think so, right? That's why you're there. Well, think about the customer who comes to your store these days. They're in looking for new flooring. They have been on the internet. They've done, the data say, perhaps as much as 75 days worth of research before they come to see you. They want new flooring. They want new countertops. They're coming to see you. They expect you to ask for the order. So create an expectation that you will be following up. Mrs. Jones, I'll follow up in a few weeks just to make sure things are going okay. By the way, think about the other floors. Now that you've seen how well this goes and how beautiful it looks, we can talk about that. And I'll see if any of your friends and neighbors might be interested in new flooring after they've seen yours and on and on. Create an expectation. Then you've already removed the first barrier, which is fear, to making a follow-up call. The E is create expectations. And then, of course, do it. The A in this model is ask. When you're having that follow-up contact, just like asking for the order, Ask about family, friends, neighbors, other rooms. And it may not be immediate. You may be planting a seed for a year from now when their budget allows doing another room. But don't forget to ask. You have to take the step. The T in this model is make it a team effort. This is where the installers, your customer service folks, whoever else gets involved in interacting with the customer, they can be planting the seeds. They can say, we'll make a follow-up call. They can see if neighbors come by to look at the new flooring during the installation because the truck's out in the yard and they saw the carpet rolled out in the driveway and you know, it's getting exciting and then there's a buzz in the neighborhood. Those are the guys on the floor on, at the time who can say, hey, there's something going on here. Make sure the customer gets reinforced for more business and make sure you get that information back. Make it a complete team effort. And the E's expand the discussion. What do I mean by that? Expand is about more rooms. Show of hands, how many of your jobs are whole house jobs? Anybody uh, over 75%? Whole house jobs, a few? Builder market or? Pardon? Yeah, new construction or? Yeah, yes? Oh, I'm sorry?
Ah, there's the rest of expanded discussion. It's not only about how much of the floor surface are you doing, but it's the blinds and it's the cabinets and it's the maintenance service. Whatever else you have to offer, expand the discussion. If they bought new wood for the family room, okay, what about rugs? You know, on and on and on. So the E in this model is for expanded discussion. And here's that whole model in one fell swoop.